Hello, everybody. I am Mrs. Poppet, and this is my place. It's so nice to see you here again today for another story time. Today's story is called Donkey Skin. You may not have heard of this one before, but it is a very good story, and I think you will like it very much. Donkey Skin Once upon a time, there was a lucky king. He was strong, noble, and wise. His subjects all loved him. His neighbors respected him. His wife was fair and good, and their love was deep and true. They had but one daughter, so bright and dear that she was all the world to them. Their palace was grand and comfortable. Their courtiers were loyal, smart, and sensible. Their servants liked hard work. Their huge stables housed the world's best horses. The marvel of the stables, however, was not a horse, but a donkey. The king kept him in a luxurious stall, with hundreds of servants, all his own. The king had a good reason for this, for the donkey never simply soiled his bedding. Instead, each morning the bed was found covered with heaps upon heaps of gold coins. One day the queen fell ill. All the doctors in the kingdom couldn't cure her. She felt her end was near. She said to the king, I have but one request. When you remarry... Never, interrupted the sad king. The queen, queen went on calmly. You must remarry. Your ministers will insist that you have sons to succeed you on the throne. Only promise me to wait until you find a wife better and fairer than I. Promise me this and I'll die happy. The king promised solemnly, and the queen died, happy in the knowledge that there were none to be found as beautiful as she. The king's ministers wanted him to remarry at once. He wept, told them of his vow, and defied them to find anyone as fair of face and as good as heart as his late queen. But the ministers insisted. At last the king promised to look around for a wife. He visited all the families that had unwed princesses, but not one princess could compare with his late wife. Unhappily, he soon decided that the only princess fairer and better than his late wife was his own daughter. He told his daughter that he would marry her, since she alone met with the conditions of his promise. She begged and begged him, as well as she might, to forget the whole idea. But he would not change his mind. The princess was frantic. That night she went in a carriage drawn by clever sheep to see her godmother, the lilac fairy. The fairy comforted her and told her what to do. To wed your father would be wrong, said the fairy, but you needn't refuse him outright. Instead, tell him to get you a dress the color of the weather before you give him an answer. Rich though he is, He'll never find a weather-colored dress. The princess thanked the fairy. The next day she told her father that she would answer his proposal after he had given her a weather-colored dress. The king summoned his finest dressmakers. Make my daughter a weather-colored dress at once, he said. If you fail, you'll hang. The dressmakers soon delivered the dress. The sky itself was no lovelier. Blue, clouded, soft, and shimmering. The princess didn't know what to do. She asked the lilac fairy. Demand a dress the color of the moon, said the fairy. The king ordered a moon-colored dress from his best silvermints. He was in such haste, they finished in the next day. It was a marvel of soft radiance, but the sight of it sent the princess to her room in tears. The lilac fairy said, I'll ask him for a dress the color of the sun. At least it will keep him busy until we think of a way out of this. The king ordered a sun-colored dress. He even gave his rarest jewels to add to its brilliance. When it was done, it shone so like the sun that those who saw it were dazzled. The princess went hopelessly to her room. 
The lilac fairy was very vexed by the king's success. Now, she said, we must ask him something really hard. Demand the skin of his dear famous donkey who gives him all his gold. Go ahead. The princess did ask the king. He thought it was a queer wish, but he did not hesitate. The donkey was killed and its skin brought to the unhappy princess. Her godmother found the poor princess weeping. Don't cry, child, she said. Misery can turn to joy if you're brave. Wrap up in the donkey skin, leave here. Walk until you can walk no more. If you give up everything for virtue's sake, heaven will reward you richly. Go and take my wand. All your dresses will follow you on your ground in this trunk. When you want them, tap twice with my wand. Now hurry. Huddled in the ugly donkey skin, all smeared with soot to hide her beauty, the princess left the palace. The king was wild to find her gone. He sent a hundred and ninety-nine soldiers and one thousand and one hundred and ninety-nine policemen to find her, but they all failed. The princess went far, hunting for a place to stay. Now and then kind folk fed her, but she was so dirty they never let her stay. At last she found a big farm where a girl was needed to empty the slops and clean out the pigsties and do all the dirty jobs. The farmer thought that such a dirty girl would be just right for the job. The princess was glad to agree. She worked hard among the fowl, the sheep, and the pigs. Soon, despite her filthy looks, she was known as a good worker. She was allowed to live in a tiny hut near the pigs. One day, she passed a pool of clear water and saw her reflection. The dirt and the donkey skin, donkey skin disgusted her. Quickly, she bathed and saw herself beautiful once more. Of course, she had to hide in the donkey skin again to return home. But the next day was a holiday. Alone in her hut, she took the fairy wand, summoned her trunk. Soon she was immaculate and splendid, jeweled and curled in her weather colored dress. That same Sunday, the son of the king, to whom the farm belonged, went hunting. On the way home, the young prince stopped at the farm. He was a handsome, lively, young, friendly fellow. The farmer's wife served him dinner after he strolled around the farm. He saw a tiny hut with a locked door. Curiosity led him to look through the keyhole. He gasped, amazed, there was a girl, beautiful beyond belief, and richly dressed. He fell in love immediately with her noble, sad, modest face and hurried to the farmhouse to ask her name. There he was told that the hut was the home of Donkey Skin, a girl so dirty none but the pigs could stay near her. The prince realized that these people knew nothing of the mystery. He asked no more and went home but he was haunted by the memory of the lovely vision he had seen. And soon he felt desperately ill of a high fever. The doctors were helpless. Perhaps, they said to the queen, your son has secret sorrow. The queen begged her son to say what troubled him. She promised to do anything he wanted. Mother, he whispered, have donkey skin make me a cake with her own two hands. Maybe that will help. Puzzled, the queen asked the courtiers who donkey skin might be. That one, said a courtier. She's a horrid, filthy girl who keeps pigs on one of your farms. No matter, said the queen. Donkey skin exists. Therefore, donkey skin shall grant my son's wish. He wants a cake made by her. We must humor the sick. Have her make a cake quickly. Orders went out to the farm post haste. Donkey Skin had heard good things about the young prince. The queen's orders might give her a chance to show her true self. Happily, she hurried to her hut. She bathed and dressed in her silvery robes. For her cake, she used the finest flour and freshest eggs and butter. But by accident, perhaps on purpose, who knows? The ring slid from her finger into the batter. When the cake was baked, she hid in her donkey skin again. 
she gave the cake to a courtier who hurried it back to the castle. The prince was so pleased he sat up to eat. He almost choked on the ring. But seeing it, he felt better. He now had a key to the mystery that haunted him. It was an emerald set in a gold band so small that only the finest finger could wear it. The prince wondered and pondered over this new clue. More he wondered, the worse he grew as his fever got worse and worse. When his parents heard that the boy's fever was worse, they came running. Son, the king, tell us what you want. We'll get it for you somehow. Father, said the prince, see this ring? It can solve all my problems. I want to marry the girl whose finger it fits, no matter who she is, princess or peasant. The king took the ring. He sent a hundred drummers and trumpeters throughout the kingdom with a hundred heralds. They summoned everyone to trying on of the ring. The girl who could wear the gold set emerald was to marry the prince. First came princesses, then came duchesses, baronesses, and ladies. Not one could wear the ring. Then actresses and models tried, but their fingers were too fat. Then came maids, cooks, servants, and shepherdesses. They had no better luck. At last, the prince said, What about donkey skin? Has she tried it? The courtiers laughed. One of them said, <laughs> No, she's too dirty to come to court. Fetch her, said the king. We must omit no one. Donkey skin heard up the heralds. She well knew that it was her ring that had caused all the commotion. Bathed and dressed and beautiful, she waited quietly. When the heralds came for her, she slipped on her donkey skin and opened the door. Joking and poking fun, the courtiers led her to the prince. Do you live in the hut behind the barnyard? he asked. Yes, majesty, she replied. May I see your hand? he asked. The king and queen were amazed and the courtiers were dumbfounded when they saw her hold out an exquisite little white hand. The ring slid on easily. It was a perfect fit. The prince knelt before her to declare his love. Blushing and touched by his homage, she shook her shoulders a trifle. Her ugly disguise fell back, and she was revealed. The most royal maiden, brilliantly dressed in a sun-colored dress. The king beamed. The queen clapped for joy. They begged her to marry their son. Before she could answer, the lilac fairy came from on high in a chariot of flowering lilac sprays. The fairy told the whole story of the brave princess. The king and queen were pleased to know that she was a well-born princess. But the prince rejoiced at her bravery and fell twice as much in love. Invitations for the wedding went out that very day. First on the list was the princess's father. He wasn't told who the bride would be. Every other king in the world came too. There were kings in carriages, kings in rickshaws, kings riding tigers, elephants and eagles. The richest king of all was the bride's father. He appeared with his new wife, a lovely, sensible, widowed queen. Pleased and surprised to find his child alive, he gave the couple his blessing the prince's father gave his throne and crown to the prince as a wedding gift. Their marriage was feasted throughout the country with a three-month holiday, but their love lasted longer still. Indeed, it would have lasted forever had they not died at the end of a hundred years. Isn't that a delightful story? This poor little princess who was being forced to do something that is definitely wrong, in stood up and had help to be able to do the right thing. And by doing the right thing and being patient and letting things take their course, she ended up exactly where she needed to be. She ended up married to her prince, whom she loved for a hundred years. It's a good thing to try and stick to doing the right thing because in the end, it always works out for the best. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's story. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.